So welcome to the Inspire Show. This is a monthly program where I interview uh, change leaders from locally and from around the world. And it's really to help inspire us and guide us to live the life and work that we really love. Hi, I'm Leanne Bridges, and I'm a work-life coach and the founder of Designing Transformation. I help people to really reignite their passion by discovering their life's calling and stepping into their highest potential. I believe that when we are following our purpose and living that, that we have the uh, potential to transform worlds, starting with our own. So before I introduce my guest today, I just wanted to say a couple of quick announcements. First is that I'm so excited about launching my book, my first book. It's called Love Will Keep Us Alive. And uh, that'll be in, I'm launching it in the Montreal area in Hudson, actually. And on May 5th, it's a Sunday from 2 to 4, so come on out. This story is really my story about surviving the heartbreaking loss of my husband and being left to, to uh, raise my two children alone. And I wrote it to really demonstrate and hope inspire others that they can really survive the worst of times and rebuild their lives and even emerge stronger so that they can have a more meaningful, full life. The main idea of this book is really that when we open our minds and our hearts, we can awaken to the fullness of our radiant life and our purpose. So come on out and uh, chat with me and the author, and uh, you can win some fabulous prizes and learn more about the book, but you need to RSVP, so please do that. The, uh, the, la the second thing I want to talk about is just my new Ignite program. So it, this program is really designed for people who are really going through a shift in their work life. Maybe they're approaching a new chapter, uh, about to retire, or really want to refire their career. It helps provide the clarity uh, for the best way forward. So the Ignite program is, offers a comprehensive guidance and tools to help gain the clarity, remove those stubborn blocks that stop us from, from moving forward, and gain the confidence to create that life that we really adore and the, it really includes the proprietary my own proprietary process I call the designing transformation method it's five-step process and it's it's based on my 30 years of experience my own personal transformation and helping clients as well get unstuck get that vision of what they want to do whether it be a job a career not-for-profit whatever they want to do in their life and it's a six-month program and you can take it privately in sessions with me or in group and so if you're ready to really redesign your life and become the fullest version of you, check out my website, designingtransformation.com, and you go forward slash ignite, and it'll bring you right to the program. So with no further ado, I really want to introduce my special guest today, Diana Lidstone. Diana helps entrepreneurs like many of us to catapult our profits and free our valuable time because many of us are unpaid, underpaid, overworked, and working on the wrong activities. Does that sound familiar? It does to me. When she said that, it really resonated with me. She, she teaches us how to catapult, cultivate, and convert more dream clients so that we can all uh, earn more and live better. She's known for her straight talk, no fluff approach, and providing clarity and, and simplification. And I'm hoping she'll do that for us today. I know she will. She offers coaching both in groups and private settings. And uh, she is the author of the best-selling book, Shift Into a Rich, which helps you navigate the nine roadblocks uh, to small business success. Diana also is the founder of Shift Live Events for Women Entrepreneurs and that started in the Montreal area in 2015. And she currently runs two of them a year. And there's one uh, next week in Ottawa, uh, April 3rd, all day. So uh, I'm sure she'll talk a little bit about that. So with no further ado, I want to welcome Diana. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. This is uh, a real treat. Thank you. This is great. So, um, so you're in the Ontario area. You're in the Thousand Islands. Is that right? Thousand or? Islands area. Yep. And if I'm, if my blinds were open here, I'd be looking right out over the St. Lawrence. So oh, beautiful. Yeah. Oh, lucky you. That's great. So you have, uh, you came from the Montreal area and the Hudson area and you have quite an interesting story of how you got to where you are as a business, a successful business coach an entrepreneur coach. And so maybe you can just tell us a little bit about your journey your your work life journey, if you will. Sure. Sure. Um, I guess I, I can't say that I've always been an entrepreneur, but I've certainly been an entrepreneur for 30 odd years. And I think the, the real challenge for me was originally when my son was born, uh, 1983. So we'll go way back. Um, you know, I was an administrative assistant or an executive secretary and that challenge of, you know, picking your kids up 
out of bed in the morning, taking them to a daycare or uh, you know a babysitter, coming home late at night, et cetera, et cetera. I just went, no, I can't do this. And uh, so in 1980, I think it was about 85, IBM came out with their first home computer. I don't know if anybody remembers it, but it weighed a freaking ton. <laughs> it yeah. had two little floppy drives. And um, so I started a business uh, and it, did I have a real name? No, I called it a typing service. Okay. So uh, back then, you know, there wasn't really the internet for, you know, like we use it today. And so people would drop off stuff and have it typed. Uh, but I also had a contract uh, at uh, McDonald College uh, doing work for some of those uh, professors and writing big documents and that kind of thing. So uh, I did that. My husband got transferred. I started again in Nova Scotia. Baby number two came along. And that business really took off. Um, I actually got a government grant uh, to expand that business. Um, went really well. We, my husband got transferred again. We came back to Montreal, came back to Hudson, uh, St. Lazar. And at that point I went, Oh, I just don't know if doing this type of business is what I should be doing. And so I went back to my original roots, which was teaching horseback riding. So I actually went back into the horse world. Hello, there's a face I see. <laughs> People I are see. joining in, yes. Yeah. And uh, yeah, went back to horseback riding, teaching and that sort of thing. Um, but, and my kids used to say to me, mom, that's not really a job. And I said, well, what do you mean it's not really a job? And they said, <laughs> because you love doing it. Uh, and uh, yeah, no, it didn't really feel like a job. I did that for a couple of years and was watching friends of mine who had a retail store down in the Eastern Township. So they had this small kind of country style gift store and I went with them on a couple of buying trips and said, well, I'd kind of like to do something like that, but I don't want to get into retail because we all know retails, you know, seven days a week and you know, all those things. Sure, six months later, <laughs> We had, my husband and I had bought a building and some of you might remember that building on Main Road. Uh, we bought a building, uh, bought inventory and I opened the Hudson Gift Emporium. And- I uh, love that store. It's yeah, yeah, yeah thank you. A Hudson. Yeah, I love that store. But you know, the truth of the matter is that I started that business, I knew nothing about retail. I mean, really. Uh, I didn't know anything about inventory, I didn't know anything about hiring people. I, I didn't know anything about marketing, nothing. And so I could say that my learning curve was pretty steep. <laughs> but luckily, uh, my husband who has a, uh, you know, a business degree was there to help. And you know, there was somebody else from the Hudson community who gave me, who was so generous with his time and that was Michael Legg. Mm -hmm. And he was really and truly probably my first mentor, if you will. I didn't know about business coaches at the time. And he was very, very generous with his time. And I learned a lot from him. Um, so 12 years, Hudson Emporium. And uh, grew it into a very profitable business, but it was also burning me out. Mm -hmm. And some of you will remember very well, one of the reasons why it was burning me out was because I had uh, some challenges, personal challenges at home with my, my daughter being bedridden with chronic fatigue. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I could just say that was some of the worst times in our, you know, collective lives as a family. Mm -hmm. um, it touched everybody. Now, I will tell those of you who you know, who remember that time that my daughter is very well now and she's actually in Australia living that's there. Amazing. That's amazing. That's, a, that's yeah. a whole other story that is a beautiful. That is a whole other story. Beautiful yeah. inspirational story. So if we have some time, we'll talk about it a little bit later, but it is a wonderful yeah. story. Yeah. Yeah. 
And so when uh, we sold the store, I had thought that, oh, I'll just take part of this store and I'll take it home and I'll go online and it'll be easy. <laughs> I had no idea what that meant, first of all. And secondly, I had no idea how burnt out I really was. And it took me probably two years to recuperate um, from that burnout. And after, so I remember my daughter coming home one day uh, and she looked in the cupboard, you know, she was rummaging around. I think it was, she was looking for tea. And I said, oh, it's over there in that cupboard. And she opens the cupboard door and she turns and she looks at me with this most disgusted look that only a, you know, a 20 something year old can do. And she goes, mom. And I'm like, what? Like the tea is there. And she goes, yes, but you know, it's time for you to go out and do something new. And I said, well, why? And she goes, well, look at the tea. It's all arranged as if it would be on a shelf in a retail store, <laughs> you know, like it was beautifully stacked and arranged and yeah. So uh, that was my first hint and my first kick in the pants. And uh, a friend of mine uh, shortly thereafter was looking for some marketing help. And uh, he was a financial advisor. So I ended up going and working for him part time uh, for a number of years, marketing his business, created a great marketing uh, plan for him. And then realized um, that, huh, I marketed my own businesses. I marketed his business. And then I met a friend of mine um, and she said, well, Diana, why don't you teach people how to grow their businesses? And I went, you mean somebody will pay me for that? <laughs> like, I don't know about you guys, but you know, somebody will pay me for that? And I really had no idea what a, a profitable coaching business looked like. Mm -hmm. And so again, a new learning curve, but, um, you know, some of the challenges were at that time, um, you know, will somebody pay me? And you I went, no, I don't have a business degree. I don't have a master's. I don't have this. I don't mm -hmm. have a certification. Yada, 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 yada. Is that mm -hmm. what I call the itty bitty shitty committee over here mm -hmm. was just talking away. And the funny thing is that my very first client was somebody who had a master's in business. <laughs> I went, really? Really? <laughs> but um, yeah, so the journey, yeah, has been very, um, you know, it's up like this, but. Mm -hmm. If I, I could, would, go sorry, ahead, go sorry. Ahead. What I wanted to just mention is just to, to talk about that for a second, because that's something that so many uh, people I hear about have, have a difficult time with. They have their own personal and, and even professional experience, but they don't trust it. They don't feel the, that trust to be able to move forward. And um, it's so important that we realize that, that some, I also meet a lot of people with degrees and, and different business experience and they, they need help from the ones who've had the more hands-on, you know, the more practical experience as well. So it's a really important message, I think, for people to recognize that and not sure. Like, oh, and how did you know, make it, how did you get over that? So it didn't stop you. Well, <laughs> I can honestly say that mindset work, um, has been huge and I've had to work on it consistently because the itty bitty shitty committee talks really loud sometimes. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I hired a one year I worked with a mindset coach another year, my business coach, uh, at the time, um, uh, the part of her, she was very, part of her was very strategic, but part of her was also very mindset. And we used a lot of EFT tapping. Okay. Um, just the other day I was talking with somebody who, again, I might hire as a coach because I, as you go along in business, I say new level of your business, new devil. So, you know, you get to a level and you go, oh, I can't do that. I can't do that. But you know, you freaking can, but it's just up here stopping you. Mm -hmm. And so I'm at a level in my business now where I'm ready to go to the next level. and. This is stuff. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. And, and interestingly though, in the past you've had like, this is the interesting thing too, I think for people is that they think that once they get there, they won't have to worry anymore. And, you know, you look at, you know, all the different businesses you start in each time kind of starting without the knowledge that maybe people a lot of times wait to have all the information, all the knowledge and then move. Right. So you moved into it and then gained it. Like, you know, I love the, the yeah. there's a quote about entrepreneurs, like jumping off a cliff and figuring out the, as they go, you know, yeah. the idea is that that's, a, I think, an important message for people to recognize that. We, and then we never get there. It's like, then it's the next thing and it's the next thing, right? It's exactly. And there is, I'm, I'm all about taking what I call imperfect action. Mm. Tell um, us about that. Because right? I think you learn so much by taking the action. Um, yeah, you might fail, but failure is there to teach us a lesson. Mm -hmm. So that's how not to do it the next time. Yeah. Um, but so but can I do you talk a little bit about that imperfect action. How do you know the difference between something that's just you know too spontaneous, too you know not thought out versus not you know overthought? Do you have a way for you that you would do that? Uh, yeah, a lot of entrepreneurs we get stuck in our heads, mm -hmm. right? And we overthink and we uh, create a lot of stuff and we go down rabbit holes, etc. But to be quite honest, how do I stay focused? How do I help my clients stay focused? It's about um, having somebody who can pull you back out of that rabbit hole or as the entrepreneur's GPS to recalculating, recalculating. And, um, you know, I just mentioned that this morning I was on a call with a group and we were talking about what's their vision for their success of their business. And that vision, three, five, 10 years, can be like your North Star, if you will. It can be, you know, helping you navigate. But I, I, I can honestly tell you, I mean, there's people in my, my group program and, you know, maybe they weren't on a call last week and we come back on a call and someone will tell me, well, I took a teaching job. I went, excuse me, why did you do that? Or they enrolled in another a program about LinkedIn. And I said, why did you do that? Well, I don't know. Well, you know, if you want to focus on your business, focus on your business. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah. And, and be aligned with your vision, right? Yeah. Yeah. And come back to that. And, and it's all about recalculating and recalculating. And sure, your vision might change, but um, that's a good thing. Yeah. And I like that because people also think, okay, if I get a vision, then, then I've got it, you know, but yeah. it's that the constant read we, we, yeah. I talked on a call last night about that same kind of thing is that, um, that in, in the old days when I was working in business, we would have our uh, business plan every year. And, and we would revise it sometimes quarterly. So first quarter and you're revising. Yep. But also we have our more vision strategic plan that was the three to five years out, but it was revised every year. So businesses do that. So as we have to too. And so yep. one, one of the ladies on said, I have to go back to my business plan. I said, yeah, you don't have to recreate it, but just to relook at it and, and shape it a little bit, you know? That's yeah. Like that's why I, uh, I have a program that well, it's not a program, but I offer every quarter something called a CEO retreat because I believe if you're all CEOs of your business. Yes, for sure. And, and um, so we do a day long planning once a quarter on Zoom like this to get you, you know, back on track. What's your, you know, what's your goal for your next 90 days? How are you going to accomplish it, et cetera, et cetera. And so that's one of the things that uh, we kind of do every 90 days. And, you know, I, sometimes I'll have people on Zoom. Sometimes I'll have people around the kitchen table. Uh, but it's a real, you know, way to get, you know, mm -hmm. what is your end goal? And let's get you back on track. Mm -hmm. Very good. That's awesome. So um, you mentioned before that when you were looking at coaching and, and grow, starting to grow your coaching business, you were surprised, and I was surprised too when I heard about this, that um, coaches on average only make 40000 a year. And uh, they're working probably, I don't know what the hours are, but they're probably at least doing 40, if not 60 hours a week to get that. And uh, so this idea, as I mentioned in your introduction, that we're underpaid overworked 
Um, so tell me a little bit about that and what it is that, what you've learned from learning that and in, in your business now, what do you do to try to help people to move beyond that? Sure. Um, yeah, so the International Coaching Federation, and I believe the statistics are that 75% of coaches earn less than $40,000 a year. Mm -hmm. um, women entrepreneurs, the majority of them earn less than $20,000. And I can honestly say that, you know, um, so when I do my live events, if I have 100 women, those statistics pretty well pay out, mm -hmm. uh, play out. So mm -hmm. um, one of the things that I started years ago was focusing on what I call the right activity for your stage of business growth. Um, and so you'll actually see behind me, it looks like a thermometer, but it's my grow meter. And I talk a lot about it in my book. Um, and there's basically four stages of business growth. And there are specific activities to focus on for each stage of business growth. And the problem with entrepreneurs being the creative bunch that we are, we kind of like go all over the place. And, um, you know, so I'll, I tell the story of this lady that I met a couple of years ago in Ottawa at a networking event. And um, she was telling me about how, how she had written a book and it was a bestseller and I was really impressed. So we went and had coffee afterwards and I thought this lady's gotta be really successful. So I don't know about you, but when you have coffee with people, the truth sometimes comes out, right? It's not yeah. quite the same as- Maybe wine, wine but yeah, coffee. Yeah, okay, <laughs> yes. <laughs> true, true, true. Yeah. So anyway, she had written this book and she had spent like a year writing it. She had spent tens of thousands of dollars. And, but then she confessed, she didn't have an email list. She didn't have a program to sell people. She didn't have an email list to sell the book to. So what she was doing was she had all these books because that's the way it was. A lot of people do it is uh, she had all these books to sell. So she was going from, uh, you know, book launch at uh, chapters from anything where she could sell these books, but she had nothing after they bought the book, there was nothing for people mm -hmm. to follow. So she had done the wrong, she had done a great activity just at the wrong stage of her business growth. That's a great example. Can, can you tell us a little bit about those four stages? Because sure. that's, uh, that's a perfect example of, well, Hold I on. see a lot of people doing the wrong activities and I'm sure I do sometimes too. <laughs> okay, so you can see here, so we've got what I call the glorified employee. And the glorified employee is, and I call it that because when you're starting a business, that's how you feel sometimes, right? Mm -hmm. You're doing it all. You're doing the bookkeeping, the admin, you're doing it all. So the thing with the glorified employee at this stage is to remember that you need to build a strong foundation mm -hmm. for the business growth. So you need to focus, I say, on three things. Uh, one is clarity. And the clarity is about who is your target market? So a compelling or a clear message. Mm -hmm. Number two is um, clarity on the problem that you are going to solve for them because people buy a solution to a problem that they have. Mm -hmm. And you have to express it like a problem. So clarity on that. Clarity on what your compelling offer is going to be, so the solution to their problem. And clarity on how you are going to get yourself out there in the marketplace and be seen and visible, and I call that outreach. So those are the three C's in the clarity. You also need to focus on connections. So what do I mean by connections? So like the woman who wrote the book, she had no connections. She had no email list to sell stuff to. Uh, and how do you go about getting those connections? So that's one thing. And the third C in there is cash. You need to make some money so that you can reinvest in your business so that you can stop doing everything. Remember, you're the CEO of your business. Mm -hmm. CEO doesn't do everything. Mm -hmm. It is, does not mean chief everything officer. 
<laughs> I like that. <laughs> so that's, that's this. And typically at this level, you are working in the service-based industry, you're working one-on-one -on -one with people, mm -hmm. not groups, mm -hmm. because you, you don't have a big tribe or a big audience. And you know you're moving up to the next level, which I call manager, when your agenda or your schedule is full of working one-on-one, -on -one, you're making good money, and then you realize you have no time to spend it. Mm. Okay? So it's at the manager level, and at the manager level... Okay, you if I could just interrupt for a second, I bet a lot of people get stuck there, the first level, and never make it beyond there. Yep. Probably like, do you have any idea of percentage? Majority? <sighs> Majority, eh? Yeah. 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 Um, so at the manager level, you're working on freeing up some time. How can you free up some time? Um, so there's three ways you can do that. You can delegate. Mm -hmm. So there are, you know, you can hire a part-time bookkeeper, a virtual assistant, et cetera, et cetera. So you get things off your plate. Um, you can leverage. So instead of working one-on-one, -on -one, you can work with groups. That's a, an example of a leveraged activity. Another leveraged activity would be um, speaking mm -hmm. as opposed to going to networking. So at networking where you're shaking, you know, one person's hand, if you are speaking at that networking event, you are speaking to 20, 30, whatever it is, and they are getting your message. So that's another leveraged activity. Uh, and um, you're also working on putting systems into place in your business. Mm -hmm. So how can you expand your email list? That's probably the number one thing. Mm -hmm. um, statistically, it's proven that if your email list <clears throat> is about a thousand, and that's a thousand, um, you know. Good context. Yeah. And people that are reading your con your content and that sort of thing, that kind of equals a hundred thousand dollars in sales. Wow, that's just so. If you're looking online and you're you know watching people on Facebook and all this stuff, these people have not tens of thousands on their email list. They have hundreds of mm -hmm. thousands on mm -hmm. their email list. So um, yeah, they're making a lot. Of, they're making a lot of money. <laughs> yeah. Also spending a lot. Don't, yeah, yeah. You know, don't kid yourself. That's don't it. Kid. Yeah, that's one of the some of the things I've heard too. Is is just to to clarify that is we do see a lot on Facebook and this guy and how to do this and all and um, you know I've heard some of those people are spending hundreds of thousands of dollars on advertising and marketing as well. Oh sure. You know. Yeah. I mean, it's if you think of an iceberg. Yeah. You're seeing on Facebook this little much. Yeah. And the iceberg is that big thing below the waterline. Yeah. yeah. So I had a coach from the States who, um, she had, let's see, four other coaches. And what they spent on Facebook advertising was probably more than most people in her program would earn in a year. <laughs> yeah, that's it. So. Uh, fourth, a uh, third level is what I call the CEO, fourth uh, stage of business growth. And this is where you really are the person who is working on the business, creating that big vision as opposed to working in the business. Most of your time is working on the business. The problem at this level is that the entrepreneur wants to go down here and dabble in this because, you know, that's their business. Mm -hmm. And so there's a real learning curve in here about leadership skills mm -hmm. uh, and letting go and that sort of thing. Yeah. And so, again, I've seen a lot of people get stuck there. Oh, and for sure. can't move beyond that. Then they yeah. and often need to hire a leadership team because they can't do it. Yeah. 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 And it's about putting the right people in place yeah. so that your business can grow. Mm -hmm. um, and it's about, you know, at this level, I say it's about building, you know, a bigger team, you know, what is your culture, your business culture like, uh, that mm -hmm. sort of thing. Legacy level is what I call, um, you know, you're at this point where money doesn't really mean anything anymore. You're making pots of it. Mm -hmm. uh, your business might be at the point where you want to leave a legacy. You, maybe you want to exit 
maybe you want to, you know, uh, one of the really important things at this level is to keep uh, on track and keep uh, aware of competition so that you don't become something like Blockbuster and just disappear. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. So that, so, so you, you help the people figure out where they are. And I guess um, in particular, the, the bottom one and two, especially the bottom one, the glorified employee, where, when they're, people are doing big group events and, and they're doing books and they're doing speaking, but they haven't really got this solid grounding they need to refocus back into that area. Yeah, and so when people work with me, I actually have a list of activities for each one of these, mm -hmm. and it's a checklist, okay, you know, and you can't move, or I don't recommend they move to, you know, this level of activity until they finish these, Yeah. you know, or they're 90% done kind of thing. Mm -hmm. so, um, and how do you help people like one of the things with entrepreneurs and and when we're in a group of entrepreneurs it's the shiny you know the shiny something right syndrome. shiny objects and yeah. <laughs> and uh, we get a group of creative people together and we're like oh you should do this oh yeah and you do this so what do you say to people like that <laughs> when they're in that process <laughs> I see Zena <laughs> laughing there <laughs> You know, we've had some of these uh, conversations. Yeah. And I go off and go and do, you know, spend a couple of months doing something and they go, what was I doing? Yeah. What did I do that for? Yeah. <laughs> I just, I, I'll quickly just uh, share something here. I'll, I'll do this quick little diagram. Sure. I like this diagram. I think I've seen it before. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Um, what I say is as entrepreneurs, we all want some kind of freedom. We all want some quality of life or success. That's what we're aiming for. Mm -hmm. And when we start out, I'd say most of us are down here, sorry, in a state that I call hustle. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like, you know, being in stage one, but it sounds like this. Ah, I need a website. Well, then I need a blog. If I have a blog, I need to post it on LinkedIn. If I have it on LinkedIn, I should be on Facebook. If I'm on Facebook, I should be doing Facebook ads. If I'm doing Facebook ads, oh, maybe I should be doing a podcast. No, maybe I should be writing a book. Maybe I should be doing this. Oh, webinars. Oh, how about retreats? <laughs> and uh, these guys are laughing familiar? and clapping on here. You can't hear them because I've muted them, okay. but they're, they're laughing their head off here. <laughs> it's so true. Okay. That's what that is is called hustle and when you're in, in the hustle, <laughs> you're, not, you're not getting the traction that you need to be successful mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so i say that there's two things you need so one is we talked about the grow meter well i call that cra and cra stands for consistently the right activity mm -hmm. for your stage of business growth mm -hmm. okay but there's a big gap here. And this is what I call your DNA. Your distinctive natural advantage. And what I found when I first started teaching this up here, that not everybody was aligned with really what they should be doing. Mm -hmm. And I went, there's got to be a way to figure this out. And so I've done some research and I've worked with some different people. And I came up with this idea and I have a workbook and whatever. So your DNA, your distinctive natural advantage is made up of three things. One is what I call your acquired mastery. That, those skills, talents, experiences from your life and from your business. Okay, you've acquired them over your time. Mm -hmm. I like I acquired my marketing. Number two is what I call your demonstrated results. Those are actual tangible results that your clients get and can attest to. And the third. Can you, can you just explain that for a second? The demonstrated results would be like, for example, so, some of your clients have improved their profit or something like that. Right. So I help people, you know, make more money, mm -hmm. but I also help them. It's not about just making more money. They have to have free up time. So they have, you know, time to live. Um, so what are the, you know, tangible results? And I get a lot of pushback from, um, spiritual I, entrepreneurs. I know like yeah, us, woo -woo. thank you. <laughs> woo -woos, that's what I call them. That, well, it's not tangible, but mm -hmm. yes, it is. There is, if you take what 
you help your clients achieve, it could be, I'll take this word, confidence. Okay, mm -hmm. maybe you help your clients get more confidence. Mm -hmm. But if you go back and drill down and drill down, what does confidence give them? Mm -hmm. The ability. You know, what is yeah. the holy grail they're looking for? I'm sorry, but they're not looking. They're not lying in bed at night looking for more confidence. Mm -hmm. They what might want to have more confidence because they want another job, mm -hmm. right? But that's what confidence gives them. So what is the end result? What is that holy grail that they're really looking for? So you need to know what those demonstrated results are. And the last but not least is what I call your effortless talents. So your effortless talent is that thing that you do so well that friends, family, prospects go, huh, how did you do that? You made it look so easy. And I'm looking at Zena, and it's like her freaking cookie. Like I could <laughs> never do that, okay? But she makes it look so easy. It comes effortlessly to her. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. And maybe she has some other talents, but I'm just, that's Hair cutting as well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, well, that too. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So to get out of hustle, when you figure out this, and when you figure out this, then you start getting some traction. Mm -hmm. But there's still three things that you will need from that. You'll need one is you'll need a roadmap, or as I say, a strategic plan, because people down here, there's no plan. Okay. Mm -hmm. Number two is you'll need your marketing mix. So that's a mix of the uh, marketing tactics or strategies that come effortlessly to you here, but that are also appropriate for, mm -hmm. you know, your stage of business growth mm -hmm. and that support your roadmap. Mm -hmm. And the third thing that you need is your, what I call your primary differentiator. So how many times have you guys gone to a networking or met somebody and they said, well, I'm a financial advisor, I'm a lawyer, I'm a bookkeeper, and I go, little, little, little. Yeah. yeah, so what? You know, or I'm a life coach, or whatever it happens to be. But what makes you different? Mm -hmm. Because people buy from people they know, like, and trust, and they buy from people who today, I'm sorry to say, but stand out above all the noise mm -hmm. on the internet. Mm -hmm. Right? And so... So what how is, you, for example, for you, how do you articulate your differentiator? So my differentiator is, is uh, not only am I, you know, I, one of my core values is truth. So I spit it out just the way I see it. Um, <laughs> number two is that I've actually walked the talk. I've actually been an entrepreneur, which many, and owned successful businesses, which unfortunately there are business coaches out there who, have not. Mm -hmm. And number two, is, or number three, is my what I call intellectual property. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? You're not. And so you alluded to that you have a five step process and mm -hmm. you've named it and whatever. Yep. That's how, that's w another way of distinguishing mm -hmm. yourself because mm -hmm. nobody else will be talking about it in the same way. Nobody else out there is talking about the DNA and the uh, CRA. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. That's so, awesome. Really awesome. And um, just, I, mean, I have a couple more questions, but I also want to give uh, people uh, the opportunity. If you have any questions, I'm going to open it up after, but if you just type it in, any questions you might have about your business or about um, some, something that uh, Diana had said. So um, tell us a little bit more about marketing mix and, and um, maybe some of the things that you find the challenging for, you know, small, like people at the bottom stage, you know, because a lot of the people that will be listening are kind of more at that, at that first stage. So what are some of the pitfalls and mistakes that you find besides the trying to do everything? <laughs> I guess that's, well, let's start everything. there. That's, that's one of the challenges, right? I yeah. want to be on Instagram and YouTube and all that. What do you tell people? How do you uh, help them? With first that? of all, it, I think people think that it is, it's about which marketing tactic or strategy they're using. And I'll say like LinkedIn, Pinterest, uh, you know, those are tactics or strategy, uh, tactics, methods. It, that, yes, those are important, but they're not as important 
as having a very clear message. Mm -hmm. So the message, you know, is translated into your website. Your message is translated into your infomercial. Your message is translated into every time you speak. So this morning, again, when I was talking to this uh, other group, um, I asked people, I kind of have this Mad Libs formula, you know, to fill in the blank about, you know, introducing. And there was not one of them that I would say, well, I need that. Mm. Mm -hmm. you know the the bottom line is your client are looking for a solution to a problem Mm -hmm. and what is the problem have you articulated it well Mm -hmm. who are you looking for um and then yeah and until that and that's why this is so important Mm -hmm. because usually when i'm finished working with somebody in here we figured out a rough thing. So here's a late, I'll give you an example. Lady came to me. She, uh, I met her mm, at a networking event in Alexandria or something. And, um, so she did the DNA, discover your uh, DNA with me. And when we started, I said, so what do you do? And she said, well, I'm an energy worker. Okay. What does that mean? Right. Mm -hmm. What problem does it actually solve? So we dig down, we dig down, and we dig down. And I say, who are your best clients, et cetera? There's a whole list of questions. And we find out that the clients that she loves working with, the clients that she gets the best results with, are those clients with, that come to her with chronic pain issues. Hmm. Okay? And I go, we do some more work. And I'm listening, and I'm listening, and I'm going... So are you the queen of chronic pain relief? (laughs) And she goes, well, funny that you use that term queen. And I said, well, why? She said, uh, she's African and comes from actual royalty descent. And I said, so, you know, there's, isn't that a much better way of explaining what you do than you're an energy worker? And she goes, well, I can't, I couldn't possibly say that when I go to a networking. I just can't, you know, claim that I'm the queen of chronic pain relief. And I said, so why not? Well, I don't know. Anyway, it took her a couple of months before she got bold enough to try it. And she went, Diana, people went, oh my God, I know who needs to work with you. Mm -hmm. That's what you want. Mm -hmm. And you know, she can actually take that. I mean, she can modify it. She can make it what she wants, but she can actually turn that into a whole brand. Yeah. So very good. That's a really great example. And, uh, and I, so it's, it's really getting that, that clarity that then goes out into all of your messages. And then, and then what about choosing those tactics for yourself, uh, choosing which ones to go on and to be on all of them? Do you, again, I'll go back to DNA. So mm-hmm. some people are natural writers, yeah. right? They're, they're gifted with it. Mm-hmm. Um, I have a friend, he's actually the MC at my events. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. He, um, he's a radio broadcaster. He wasn't always. Uh, he actually overcame stuttering and then become a ra- became a radio broadcaster. So when I was, when he and I were working together, um, it didn't make sense for him to create a blog, for instance, and be a writer. He's mm-hmm. a speaker. Mm-hmm. So he created a podcast. Mm-hmm. So again, working on, you know, what comes naturally to you here, but also where are your ideal clients hanging out? Mm-hmm. Right. 
And, and that's really key because I think a lot of people will see what others are doing and they go, oh, I should be writing when I'm a better speaker. I should be speaking when I'm a better writer. When I look at the work you do, you do a lot of all these different things. How do you focus for yourself what you want to do? Because it always comes back to your DNA and stuff. But you do right. um, a live and you do, you, you do a, a weekly, I think, newsletter, right? With lots of rich information in it. I wonder, I wonder how you have the time to put it all together. I admire <laughs> the content that's Thank coming you. out, you know, and it's always really great and helpful information always, you know? So how do you do that? And so, how do you pick? Yeah. It, you know, I didn't start out doing them all at once. Mm -hmm. Number one. So <laughs> that's a good yeah. point. Um, you know, you didn't become whatever you do. You didn't become that right away. Yeah. You know, you put your way up. Mm -hmm. So I started uh, blogging. First of all, it was once a month. Mm -hmm. Then I moved it to twice a month. And then I moved it to every week. And I made a commitment that it would be such and such a day at such and such a time and out it goes. Mm -hmm. uh, a year and a half ago, I decided to do Facebook Lives. Mm -hmm. I originally started doing them three times a week and went, oof, too much. <laughs> but again, you know, I made a commitment to do them. Mm -hmm. And then uh, probably about two years ago, I went back and looked at, and this is an exercise anybody can do, where do your best clients come from? Mm -hmm. How do you get them? Is it that they're reading your blog? Is it that they met you? Whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And my 99% of my clients come from me speaking. Mm -hmm. Now, some of you will go, oh, speaking, I could never do that. Well, I could tell you that five years ago, neither could I. Mm -hmm. So, um, again, it's a skill mm -hmm. that you learn, you yeah. master it, and away you go. Awesome. So, uh, yeah. Really, really great information. I'm going to just open up for a second um, mm -hmm. because I know there's some people on here that could really ask some great questions. I'm going to say, <laughs> point out to Zena and Doris, if you know, you're thinking about your business and you're thinking about growing it, um, you know, and trying to get your, your unique message out there. Um, Zena, for example, is trying to get to the next level and, and become the international cooking star that we know she has inside her. <laughs> yes, yes you have I any have. specific questions to, to help you because you, you also have two kind of two um, jobs. And uh, hold on a second, I'm just going to Georgina. I'm lower the fan now, please, because I'm no longer muted. Okay, lower yeah. the fan now. You're unmuted there, right? So I unmuted you. Yeah. So just, um, do you have any questions about your, um, your kind of trajectory and, and what you should be focusing on? I know that's sometimes a challenge for you as you're, you're running both businesses at the same time, you know, but you mm -hmm. want to get to the next level. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I struggle with time management basically. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think a lot of people do as well. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of the answers, but a lot of people know the answers. They'll tell you, find a space in your home where it's an office, get dressed like you're going to the office and commit to the hours. But we all know it, but why don't we do it? <laughs> How do we do it? You know, um, I've been talking about creating uh, small videos for a long time. And again, it reass reaffirmed it to me when you said, if you're not a writer, do what comes to you naturally. And for me, I feel like I'm very comfortable in front of a camera. I can put a sauce together in a minute. I can cook something real quick. Instead of writing about a story, why don't I just do the story? Mm -hmm. So what are the, what do you do to like get going? Even though you have clear vision, how do you get going? Mm, great question. So, every, yeah, thank you. And it's great to see you again, Zena. You too. Uh, <laughs> it's been it's, a long time. It's, um, <clears throat> You know, I could say it's discipline, it's whatever you want. But one of the things that I teach is that you have to live. Structure gives you freedom. Okay. So, and those I know. Are, those are words to my, is that a song to my ears? Structure gives you freedom. <laughs> there's a lot of, there's a lot of Leanne in everything you say. So it's, it's, it's good to be like, you're re-endorsing what she tells me. Okay. So. I teach live by your Google calendar, mm. okay? You cannot run a business. You cannot be a CEO of a business 
without doing that. Mm. And how old are your kids now? How old are your boys? Um, Mitchell is 17, Nicholas is 21, and AJ just turned 24. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I know. Okay. So you're not living, you know, the toddler at home anymore. No. no. So there are many people who run multiple six-figure businesses working 20 hours a week on their business. Mm -hmm. 30 hours a week. 30 hours a week is, but you've got to be working on the right activities. Mm -hmm. And you've got to set aside time in there to work on the big picture. Mm -hmm. And um, it's really a struggle for a lot of entrepreneurs to not get distracted and, you know, not say, or to say, well, I'll do that later or whatever it happens to be. But, you know, um, what is it that, you know, what's the number one thing you want to get accomplished? You know, if it's making more money, if you want to, you know, let go of, I don't know how much you're doing in your hair dressing anymore but you know I can all I can also say that and from working with a number of people that that's your comfort cushion I'm guessing and it's really scary to let that go but guess what if you let that go you'd bust your ass to make the other one work <laughs> That is such a, such a good point, you know, is that um, we hold on to these other things and until we have to make money doing the other thing, we don't bust our butt. And so yeah. people who have spouses making money, I see that they're very slow to move. When we actually have to make money doing something or people who have a side hustle, it's very slow. But, you know, me, I am single. I've got to, like, look after my kids. Man, do I hustle. Do I, there, you know, you don't have to ask me, that. when am I going to get up? When I'm going to work? It's like, it has to be done, you know? So that's such a great point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's scary, though, huh? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you're saying, like, where do you, all your clients come from? My, I have my clients, you know, it's over 25, 20, almost 25 years. Mm -hmm. But they're my people. You know, mm -hmm. so my, my, both of my businesses, it's the same people. So, yeah. Yeah. And, um, you know, I do have, I have worked with what we call multipreneurs. Um, but they also have to, um, think about, um, which business is it that they want to really grow? Mm -hmm. And that's the question I always have for them. You know, if you think about, um, you know, use in a, think about a funnel. So you're, I'll draw it like this. You know, your hairdressing people feeds into your cooking. But if you grew an email list, and if you grew a following, I'm going to say on, you know, some social media platform, that would feed your funnel. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. as opposed to your hairdressing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Doris, okay. Doris, 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 Doris is like, no, don't take it. my hairdresser yeah. away from me. <laughs> yeah. I hey, listen to you. For everybody listening to this yes, interview, I am not leaving hairdressing. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to make a panic. <laughs> no, and you know what, Zena, we're just using that as an <laughs> example. <laughs> example. Is an example, and we're not, yeah, not recommending that. But I think that, uh, and yeah, and all the people who are with you. But it's just that idea that um, is is that focus that's so required, and it's really and hard when we're spread into that. different yeah. things. You know, for mm -hmm. sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. I like yeah. the funnel. Yeah, it's, it's, funnel. Like the funnel. it's like we've never seen the funnel before, right, Doris? <laughs> <laughs> it's good to see it again. That's great. Thank you. Awesome. So, um, is it, does anyone else have any other questions? Doris, do you have a question for your, your business? Uh, yeah, it's, it's just listening to you <clears throat> for a while now. I've been struggling what my message was and I kind of hung on to somebody else's message that I would regurgitate, mm -hmm. but I never really felt it was my own. So I didn't have the passion and Leanne and I've had many discussions about this. I never had the fire in my belly about it, mm -hmm. but what's happened is I've just recently turned 60 and it's kind yeah. of, it, no, 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 no. It's, no, it's, it's not an age thing. It's, it's an age thing in the fact that it's, it's kind of brought me back to myself. Mm -hmm. So it, it's kind of been a, 
it, it, it's helped me get my message clearer as, as, as opposed to being this life coach and this evolved parenting coach and, and all these labels that didn't really fit me really well. It's the fact that I've stepped into my elderhood to, to share my wisdom that I've learned along the way. So all my, all my struggles that I've had, I don't really want to call them struggles, but all my, my challenges that I've had have got me to, to, to be the right. elder and, and, and sharing the wisdom um, of what I've learned along the way. And, and that is what kind of resonates with me. But I also write in our journal and I, and I started blogging. But I think talk to, I've realized I love talking. I mean, it's, it's my comfort zone is talking to people. Um, and and we, I've spoken about <clears throat> um, going to Toastmasters and things like that to, to perfect the way that I do it. Mm-hmm. And, and talking to you two today has made me realize how important that is. Mm-hmm. Um, is yes, I'm collecting my tribe and I've, I've started building my tribe. It's now um, the best way to articulate my message. And that's always been my challenge, is, yeah. is how to best articulate it. And that's, you know, that is probably the number one challenge that on, that's what keeps people here, mm-hmm. stuck here. And that's what I help them figure out um but also my way of being stuck there is a pro- is a way to procrastinate to stop me from moving forward mm-hmm. yeah. much easier to do that and, and appear to be busy doing something <laughs> and i remember one of my very first coaches said to me um diana you're not afraid of failure mm-hmm. i was afraid of success mm-hmm. well, this is i don't want to be busy <laughs> I don't because I you don't want, I want to share my message. I want to make a difference, but I really don't want to be busy, and that's a big challenge. Yeah, yeah, I get right. That. And that's why. So that when I had to do my own inner work, the fear of success was because I, in my mind, success meant that I had to be busy and overworked. Yeah, yeah. same here. Yeah, right. right? <laughs> So I had to change that mindset that, no, you don't have to be busy to be successful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, I like the way you think, Diana. (laughs) (laughs) That's great. We're we're running just a little bit out of time. Jojo or or Georgina, do you have anything else you want to add? Or um, uh, if you want to stay on a little bit later, maybe uh, you can ask a question directly to Diana, but I want to give Diana a chance to just let us know how people can get in touch with you and that you have a, an event next week. And uh, if people want to join me, they, um, I'm looking at possibly going. So there you go. Doris is saying maybe it's next Wednesday. So Diana, maybe you can let us know that how we can get in touch with you. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, and it's been, uh, it's been great chatting uh, with you guys. Uh, so the best place to reach me is my website. So dianalidstone.com. Uh, email is diana at dianalidstone.com. Uh, but I also have, there's a quiz. That if you go to dianalidstone.com slash quiz, um, there's a great quiz about, and it, the question is, what is your next best step in your marketing? Mm-hmm. So uh, take the quiz and, uh, and have some fun with that. Um, Yes, I do have my shift marketing event, which is next Wednesday in Ottawa. Um, And uh, that event will be, there'll be somewhere between 80 and 100 entrepreneurs there. Um, All day event. And we're talking about marketing and, you know, how you can get clear on your message, what you need to get clear on your message. Um, and we'll take it from there. We'll also talk about nine reasons why your prospects might not be hiring you. Mm, nice. Uh, because it really is all about your prospects. Mm-hmm. It's not about you. It's about what your prospects think about you. And uh, so we'll be talking about that. So I also have a, if anybody wants to come to that event, uh, on my website, there is a tab that says events and you just, you know, underneath that, <coughs> the marketing event. Um, and I'll give you a discount code to use at checkout. So the discount code is DL, like Diana Lidstone, 25, 
which means instead of paying, I think it's $197 for the day, you get it for $25. Wow, that's amazing. Thank you. That's really awesome. Well, Very yeah, amazing. $25 plus the tax. But um, <laughs> yeah, so that's going to be uh, a fun day. I do these events twice a year. Uh, spring is the marketing event. The fall is the um, what I call the profit event. So that'll be September 27th. You can mark it in your calendars now. And uh, yeah, no, it's going to be fun. It'll awesome, Diana, because you, you know, you at the beginning of the call, I said, you know, what, I'm just like, I'm launching my book, I'm too, but I'm committed to come. So if any of you oh, yes. online here are going to come, Doris, Zena, Joe, anyone wants to come with me, uh, we'll drive up of the day in Ottawa. So it'll be amazing. So uh, I would be thrilled yeah. to have you guys there. That would be, so, oh, 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 would just, it'll be great. Well, thank yeah, you so, so much for offering that beautiful price to us. And we really appreciate it. That's great. Cool. Awesome. Good. All right. Uh, any uh, any last words? Anything else you wanted to say before we uh, close up? Uh, we have a way to get to you. We know what's coming up for you. Uh, you also have a book online too that people can download on Kindle or or buy the book uh, uh, on Amazon as well. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Great. Well, thank you so, so much for joining us, for giving us all these great tips to help our business and realize that we are in that and possibly in the hustle and how to move out of that. And I think that's uh, so important so that we could earn more money, have more time to do the things we really want to do with that money. Right. Right. Okay, so, <laughs> thank you so much, Diana. Thank you, everyone who stayed on. Uh, appreciate it. And we'll see you next time. Bye for now. <laughs>